could feel and the prayers that I heard my mom on her knee last me through eternity she said one day son you'll hear a sweet voice one your eyes cannot see and that's why I say the God I serve has been better than good to me. Well, God's been better than good to me. My Lord's much better than good. When I heard His voice and I let Him in, that's when He saved me from sin. There's never been a valley that I've had to face that He was not there with His grace. And that's why I say the God I serve has been better than good to me. I've got two good arms and two good legs and two good hands and feet and a good strong back that lets me earn bread for my family to eat and I've got a good heart that lets my eyes cry a home that's warm and dry and the God that I serve that's been better than good and I don't understand why sing church but God's been better than good to me my Lord's much better than good when I heard his voice and I let him in that's when he saved me from sin there's never been a valley that I've had to face that he was not there with his grace and that's why I say the God I serve has been better than good to me. Amen. We can all say that. He's been better to us than we deserve. These things, these things He's given to us that we didn't even ask for. These things the enemy, the devil, the world, and all of your trouble and all your sin that had taken away from you that really you didn't deserve to have back, but He gave it back to you. Amen. Over and abundantly above has the Lord blessed you. Amen. We've got greater houses than we need. We've got greater houses than we deserve. You say, I work for them. Well, who gave you the ability to get out of the bed and go to work? God has been better than good to me. Amen. He has you too. It is an honor to be in the Lord's house. I appreciate everybody that's here. Amen. What an honor. It's good. To, Sister Lynn's still on there tonight. So uh, it's an honor uh, for us to, to have make her a part of our service. And I appreciate her. And it's an honor for her to be on, on with us tonight. Amen. Brother Keith, come preach for us tonight. Pray for Brother Keith as he comes and gives us his heart. Amen. Pray for him tonight. Pray for him tonight. always good to be in church, isn't it? 
sometimes we come and seem like the Spirit's just moving in everything that we do. Then other times it's kindly dry. But my God, the Lord's always there. He promised where two or three would gather in my name. He says, there I am in the midst. He's always in the midst of his people. I love him tonight. Amen. I want to just commend a few things tonight. You say, well, brother, you ought not pin the roses on people to brag on, but I think you ought to. Amen. I thank God the time that I've been here in the church. You've got two fine preachers that I've heard preach. You know, Brother Dale, for quite a few years. I've got the privilege to hear Brother Johnny last week, I believe it was. It was such a blessing. Me and Pat went home. We talked about, amen, the Word of God that he preached. It's not that way everywhere, folks, that you go, amen. You turn the radio on, TV on, whatever, and there's a lot of preachers there. But you don't hear a lot of them preach the Word of God. And amen, I'm persuaded to believe that they've changed, amen, a lot of them's preaching out of the new Bible and yeah. thus today and God be their witness and their, uh, they'll give account of that, amen. amen, I still believe in the old King James amen. Version, I believe that's the only word, amen, today, the Bible said heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. David said it's settled, amen, and heaven ain't going to be changed to fit me or fit you or anyone else. But I need the Lord's help tonight, how I need Him. We was down in the basement early this morning praying and asking the Lord to bless the service today and help us and help Brother Dale, and he did, amen. My God, how he did. And we sure appreciate that. Appreciate all you folks today, and amen. I want you to pray much for me. I was out there in the car, and a little boy, I don't know his name, but he walked up to the window there where I was at, and, and I said, I'm going to be preaching for you tonight. He said, are you a preacher? I said, yeah. <laughs> and the other little boy laid his hands on me when I was knelt down there. My God, listen to me. Thank the Lord for the children tonight. My God, sometimes they can get a prayer through it. Me and you can't get through. Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven tonight. And I appreciate the youngins, amen. And I, I was thinking along this journey, you know, as us preachers, sometimes people give us, a, a, maybe lift us up a little bit or whatever, but the greatest two things that I think it's ever been said to me in my Christian life, and what I've been preaching was this, amen, me and my brother, we preached a revival up in Mary, North Carolina quite a few years ago, that preacher said those two boys are Bible preachers, my God, what could be said any more than that, being a Bible preacher, and then I was preaching at Clover just a few weeks ago, and as a young man there, he's probably in his early 20s or so, and, and amen, I preached that morning, we're going to preach, and he got up and was testifying, and he said these words. He said, I was glad, amen, uh, uh, Brother Marvin, when he called Keith to come and preach. I, I thought, well, why, I wonder why. And he said, we get out early. <laughs> My God, listen, brother and sister, if we get youngins to listen to us, my God, that's awful important, isn't it? I appreciate the Lord. Turn your Bible to the book of Job, chapter number 2. We'll read some scripture there and preach just for a little while, as the Lord will help us tonight. Amen. Chapter 2 of the book of Job. Amen. We'll begin reading with verse 3. When you found that place, I'll give you a moment of time. To time, amen, to stand, or if you want to, and read along with us that chapter, amen, or in that chapter, verse number three, amen. The Bible said, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and issueth evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. Put forth, but put forth thine hand now, and touch his bones and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord, and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a posture to scrape himself with thaw, and he sat down among the ashes. Then said 
said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips? You might be seated this time. I want to preach from this thought by the help of the Lord. Bad things happen to good people. Bad things happen to good people. And tonight, if I could have chose any other scripture, I would choose Job, amen, to read his word and to follow along uh, with him. If you've read this Bible, this book, uh, and I hope and pray we've got some Bible readers in the house of God. Amen. That's what we need. You know, a lot of people don't like preaching. uh, And the reason they don't like preaching, uh, they don't know what the preacher's preaching about. Amen. Uh, My God, listen, if you'll become a Bible reader and read the Word of God, uh, you'll know exactly where the preacher's coming from. A lot of times, if you read the Bible, uh, amen, in Sunday school, uh, when the teacher begins to teach, uh, you'll know what he's reading or teaching because uh, you have read that. When the man of God uh, stands up to preach, uh, I remember back in our early Christian life, uh, amen, how we studied the Word of God, how we carried a little testament uh, all the time. This thing's way too loud, brother. Will you cut it down? Just cut it down. Amen. My God, I'm kind of loud and I don't want to blast you out tonight. But I remember, amen, as I said, carried a little testament in my shirt pocket and every time I got a little break in the cotton mill, we'd read that little Bible. Amen. And the old man of God would get up to preach and sure enough, just where I read, there's where he'd be preaching. My God, what a blessing it is to know and hear the Word of God. But I'm looking at Job tonight and the Bible testifies of him and I believe the word of God amen tonight the Bible said that Job was the land of us there and the scripture tells us amen he was a, a perfect man the Bible said it said he was upright it said he feared God and listen to this he issued evil you know what that means that means my God he avoided evil when evil was around him. Uh, my God, he went the other way. Uh, shouldn't we do that tonight as the people of the Lord? Uh, when somebody wants to tell a bad joke, uh, my God, we need to go the other way. We ought not use our ear for a trash can uh, to hear the things. Uh, the Bible said he issued evil. And I look at this man, uh, how that God blessed him. And uh, the Bible tells us, uh, my God, that he had seven sons, uh, a man and three daughters. Uh, my God, in this era and time, uh, that's not a real blessing. Uh, uh, but in Bible times, uh, and even back in my time, uh, having a big family was a blessing, thank God. Uh, amen. And Job was a man that the Lord blessed uh, and gave him a big family. And the Bible says not only that, uh, but he blessed his substance. Uh, uh, 7,000 sheep. Uh, uh, thank God, 3,000 camels. Uh, uh, 500 yoke of oxen. Uh, and 500 she asses. Oh my God, listen to me. And a great household. Hey, getting around, amen. Bad things happen to good people. I'm preaching, amen, to Job. How he feared the Lord and served God. And God blessed him every way he turned. The hand of the Lord was upon him. Now I want you to get this tonight. Each one of us, I want to show you how the Lord has blessed us. Beyond and above what we can understand and what we know. Look at us how we're clothed tonight. We've got the best best clothes we've ever had. Uh, By God, look at the cars we drive. Uh, We drive good cars. Uh, We live in good houses. Uh, uh, By God, listen, I sat down today, not a man to bread and water, uh, but a four four course meal. Amen. I'm just country. Amen. 
I may use some words, amen, and that I don't even understand myself, amen. Oh, but my God, Lord, just help me tonight. I know what it is, amen, to live poor. Most of you folks don't know me. We've got ten children. Me and that little woman sitting back there. My God, listen. People say, what you got all them youngins for? Because we wanted them. Because the Lord gave them to us. And I know what it is to live, amen, with poor and without. I know what it is to live in old houses when the wind had blew. The rug had raised up off of the floor. I know what it is, thank God, just to have a house and a nail on the wall where you hung a shirt and a pair of pants, amen. Oh, my God, look at us tonight. The Lord has blessed us. Beyond measure, and I'm preaching about Job. Thank God I can see Job as he walked out on his porch. Of a morning he looked over that land. My God, he must have had a lot of land to take care of 7,000 sheep. It meant 3,000 camels and all those mules and oxen. My God, he had to have some land to take care of that. And now, my God, I don't have all that. But I get up every morning. Me and Pat, we go to the table and we look over at the mountain. Thank God that God's part our life and let us live and enjoy another day. Amen. My God, listen to me. God's blessed us beyond and above what we deserve and what we'll ever have. Amen. I want to just say a few things here. My God, I can remember when I drove an old car, had an old station wagon. Thank God, bought it from a boy that worked in the junkyard. That thing was about three colors. Green, white, and primer. Amen. And I'd drive that old car to church. And I want to tell you something. The Lord blessed me just as much as if I'd been driving a Cadillac. Thank God we'd get to church. Amen. And the windows wouldn't let down and the doors wouldn't open. My God, we'd have to kick a while and finally get a window down. And one of them boys would slide through the window and get out there and open the door. But can I tell you on the way to church, the grass was green. Hallelujah. The birds were singing. And the power of God, my brother, was with us. What joy it is to be a Christian to live for Jesus and the Lord's blessing are upon His children. My Lord, look at us tonight how the Lord has blessed us. Why, we're the people in the world that the Lord's blessed beyond and above what we could ever even think about. So I see Job here. A man is mighty blessed to the Lord. Uh, but watch out, child of God. Uh, amen. The devil can't stand it. Uh, amen. The Bible said, now here's what he done to Job. Uh, he come up before the Lord and accused Job. Uh, and can I tell you that the devil accused you uh, and tell you let this happen to her, let that happen to him, and he'll curse you to your face. He'll quit going to church. You say, that's not right, preacher. Look Look at the empty pews. You know why? Because the devil told them, amen, and accused them before God. And that's what he did to Job. But he said, here's what he said about Job. He said, Lord, you've made a hedge around about him. Oh my God, God's got a hedge around us tonight. What is that hedge? It's a fence, thank God. You put a fence up out here, amen, to put the cow, to keep the cows in, but also that fence is to keep something from I'm coming in to them. And God's got a hedge. I said God's got a hedge around His children tonight. My God, tonight. And brother, He's protecting us. And nobody can protect you like the Lord can. So, here is Job and everything's going right. You know, sometimes in our life, everything goes right. I mean, seem like, amen, the devil can't get to us no way, shape, or form. But brother, he's got a way of getting to us. Look at Job. Now, I'm preaching on bad things happen to good people. Don't you think, amen, just because the devil's turned loose on you, you've done something wrong. Years ago, there was a theory that come out, amen, if you was doing wrong, it's because, amen, that you had done something wrong. If something got, you got sick, amen, or amen, you lost your job, it was because you done something wrong. That's not altogether right, amen. Job 
was a perfect man, yet the devil was turned loose on him. The fence was taken down, and the Lord allowed Satan to tempt him and to try him. And here's what happened. Brother, we all time, we can serve the Lord so good when we got jingle in our pockets. And man, when everything's going good, why, we're the happiest people in the world. Hey, would you take a little bit of that jingle out, and we lose the joy that God has given us. Amen. Look at Job now. Uh, the Bible said, The Lord have you said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? Amen. That he's a perfect man. The Lord saying, Amen, to his children. Those are my children, Satan, and they are serving me. And thank God they some of us, by the help and grace of God, we've made up our mind that we're going all the way. My foot's on the rock, hallelujah, and my mind's made up. I'm a going through by the help and the grace of God tonight. If God be for us, who can be against us? He accused, amen, Job. He said, Job, now, everything you've touched, the Lord's blessed it and increased it. And he's just blessed you every way you turn, amen. Let me say this and then I'm going to hurry up and go on. I like the way the Bible said Job continually prayed for his children. That shows me that Job was a good man. Not only in the possessions that he had, but he prayed for his family. Lord bless you people here. Amen. Your children. Thank God for them. Amen. My God, I see them behave like they should in the house of God. Amen. It's not that way everywhere you go. Amen. Uh, Brother Dale knows about it. I know something about it in other churches that I go to. And, uh, my God, we ought to shout glory here in the church. Amen. For the way God has put it in order and is keeping it in order tonight. But I see now, here's Satan, amen, coming and accusing old Job. And he tells that Job, amen, just take that, Lord, take these things away from him uh, and he'll curse you and turn from you. And the Bible said, now remember, I said he was a man that God had blessed and given great possessions. Uh, and the Bible said his seven sons and three daughters uh, were in a house there feasting. Uh, amen. They'd come together. And about that time, amen, uh, one come to Job and said the Salvians uh, uh, fell, amen, there uh, upon the camels, I believe it was. Uh, amen. And took them all away. Uh, carried them away. Uh, there's Job, amen. His camels are gone. Uh, no longer did that one get through speaking to another come uh, and said, amen. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, fire from heaven is fell and burned up all the sheep. Oh, listen to me. Again, when we face trials, amen, sometimes it's hard to keep on keeping on. But can I tell you, the Lord said, I'll never forsake you or never leave you. Well, that's half of his possessions gone. There, amen, is the camels and the sheep gone. What else can happen? The Bible tells me then. Amen. I believe the Chaldeans fell upon the, uh, the auction and, amen, the mules and carried them off. Amen. Well, here here he is, all these things, everything he's got taken away from him for his earthly good. You ever had an old car, amen? I drove some old traps along this time. I didn't know if he's going to make it to church or not, amen. Uh, uh, my God, but listen to me. Uh, uh, the Lord blessed us anyway. They used to be recaps. Some of you don't know what a recap tar is. Uh, and we mountain people, we say tars uh, and we say arn, amen. We say all them good words. Uh, you see, we're not from the city. Hallelujah, we're from the mountains. God bless mountain people. Amen tonight. I know God's a God in the valley, but He's the God of the mountain too. But I can remember them old cars. Amen to God we'd have old recap cars on them and we'd call them Maypops. They wouldn't have a tread on them. They'd be slick as a mole. And we'd just drive them cars on. You know why? Oh, the Lord said, Amen, I'll be with you. Amen, I'll bless that little bit and make it much. Little is much if God is in it. Amen. Hallelujah. But here's Job. My 
God, what else could happen? You ever been that way? Thank God. The devil, amen, been turned loose on you. This happened and that happened. What else can happen, Lord? Well, something else happened. And the Bible said, amen, a great wind from the wilderness came and blowed the pillars out from under the house. And it fell down on his seven sons and three daughters. And they were all killed. By God, listen to me. I've got one little girl that left this world. Amen. By God, and how sad I was. I can't imagine at one time all of my ten children being taken away from me. But Job, the Bible said all ten of his children at one time. I'm preaching on bad things happen to good people. Here he is. My Lord, the Lord has blessed him with abundance, earthly goods, blessed him with a big family, and now it's all gone. I want to show you this, amen, as the people of God tonight. You people are faithful to the Lord. I've known people, amen. I want to just use my little daughter that passed away, Martha. She couldn't walk. She couldn't sit up. She couldn't feed herself. Her mother feed her, fed her. Got up all times during the night and turned her. She couldn't turn herself. But I'll tell you what that kid would do. She'd tell me, we passed her down in Greer, South Carolina for a while and other places. And Pat, sometimes other children would be sick or whatever and they wouldn't be able to go to church. And Martha would say, Daddy, will you take me to church this morning? Bad things happen to good people. Brother, I'll tell you, she sat in an old wheelchair. A lot of us, we've never sat in a wheelchair. And if you look at those things, they are the worst built thing in the world. Why did they not build them comfortable so people could sit in them? This little kid had to sit in it all day from the time we took her out of the bed and we carried her and put her in a wheelchair and we had to carry her and put her in the car and we carried her in church, amen. But every time the doors was open, Martha said, Daddy, take me to church. <laughs> My wife had seven children, never a miscarriage. Martha and Mary was born at five and a half months. And Martha had cerebral palsy at birth. Mary was normal, but Martha wasn't. And when we took her, you know, here's what they told us. We took her to the doctor. They mean, she'd cry. Cried all the time. We never had a youngin' to cry. On time they cried when they was hungry. Amen. Or they needed changing. Let that be a lie to you folks. Your baby's crying. It needs changing. It needs something to eat. It just don't cry. It's sick or something. We took that youngin' to a pedi- pediatrician or whatever you call them baby doctors. And you know what that doctor told us? He told us that youngin' was petted. That's what he said. He said, she's just petted. Well, we know something was wrong with her. So we took her to Charlotte. And we went over there and that doctor, as soon as he looked at her, he said, she's got cerebral palsy. He said, she won't ever be able to walk or nothing like that. And said, she's retarded. Well, he was right on halfway, but retarded, no. I could bring that youngin' in here tonight and introduce her to some of you people, come back six months and she'd know you by name. <laughs> Bad things happen to good people. My mama, hey amen, I was been, Brother Dale was talking the other night about, he said his mama about went blind before she died. My mama did too. My mama, hey amen, I never seen my mama in a pair of shorts. I never seen my mama with a pair of pants on. My mama didn't do no jigs, hey amen, and hillbilly music. She never danced a step, hey amen. But I'll tell you what she would do when she'd get in the house of God and the prayer of God and move on her. She'd done what they call the holy dance, which went out of style now, but it's still in style when the Holy Ghost gets on, folks. Yes, sir, brother. She'd dance all over the place and shout the church down. Glory be to God, brother. Bad things happen to good people. When she left this world, she was blind. We don't know what kind of condition we're going to leave this world in. But I'll tell you, let's be faithful to the Lord. Now, here's Job and all these bad things that's happened to him. 
There's a brighter day coming for God's people. Sometimes it don't happen here in this life. And sometimes it does. Read the 42nd chapter of the book of Job. The Bible tells us there that God gave him twice of what he had at the beginning. Sometimes when you go through a trial, amen, and a lot of things are taken from you, God will give you that and more back. Yes, He will. The Bible said He had 14,000 sheep. He only had 7,000, but God blessed Him and gave Him double, amen, another 7,000. And the Bible tells us He had, amen, the camels there, amen, he increased them double and everything He had. And then He gave Him, amen, three sons, Excuse me, three daughters and seven sons. Preacher, why did he not double that? He knew Job was old. He couldn't take care of all them youngins. That's why. You ever tried to tend to young, ten youngins? You ever tried to get them all ready for church? Amen. And get them, amen, to church and be on time? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. People can't get to church now with one youngin on time. And let me say this, every, it never passed a Sunday morning. We didn't get up and have to start looking for shoes. Well, can you imagine, amen, looking for shoes for seven youngins? That was before Mary and Martha was born, and then they was born, and that was nine youngins. Oh, how the Lord's blessed me. Our brother was telling us about, amen, he was talking about him. And Melody sitting in the house, amen, and drinking coffee before the kids get up. And he said, they hear them little youngins get up in the feet. <laughs> There's nothing in this world that's ever brought the joy to me. My family and then knowing Jesus is the most important thing, but them youngins is the next thing. My youngest daughter now is 30 years old. She'll come to our house, you know what she'll do? She'll go sit on mama's lap. Ain't that a blessing? Hallelujah to God. Amen. They had all got on there if they could have. Bad things happen to good people along this journey. You and I have known good people served the Lord, was faithful to God. Old mighty cancer come upon them, took away everything just about the head. I want to leave one little point with you and I'm going to quit. The Bible talked about their Job. And his wife, amen, saw, she had lived with Job and saw him blessed and everything that he had. And then things changed. And she looked at Job and she said, why don't you just curse God and die? Now I want to show you something here with Job. Remember, Job has had, amen, or has got bulls from the top of his head, amen, to the bottom of his feet. Now a lot of you young people don't know what bulls are, but some of us older people, we know what bulls are. And it's so a sore that's so sore your britches leg can't touch it. Amen. Your shirt can't touch it. But he had them all over his body. What happened to Job with this? He lost his looks. I'm going to tell you, Job, amen, and I'm going to prove it just in a minute by the Word of God. Job was a handsome man. He wasn't beautiful, but he was handsome. And he was strong because he was a farmer. You show me a farmer and ain't strong. You show me a hard worker and ain't strong. But here's Job, the Bible said, amen, he's got all this on him. He's lost his strength. And us men, now I want you to think about when we were boys. There's not one of us that didn't think about strength. Lifting, lifting weights or whatever. To have strength because, amen, we wanted muscles. And I've seen bigger muscles on a bandy rooster than that, ain't you? <laughs> Hallelujah! But here is Job now in that kind of shape. Amen? And the Lord, I've already repeated, and I won't repeat again, but God's given him a second, everything he had. And the children, I said that Job was a handsome man. And his wife, I believe, was a beautiful woman. Why do you say that? Those three girls, read the last chapter, chapter 42. Those three daughters were the fairest girls in the whole land. So that proves mom and daddy had to have a little looks on it. Let's stand. We, I'm going to quit right there. Thank you for your attention tonight. God bless you for praying for me.
I need the prayers of God's people. It don't matter how long you preach, amen, you still need the Lord. Amen. amen. I think today, amen, and since Dale asked me to preach, I've worried more about preaching tonight than I have, and I don't know how long it's been. I sought the Lord. Sure. Ask God to help me. And I sure appreciate the privilege, and I appreciate all you people here. Amen. God bless you, Dale. Just whatever you want to do, son, I'm through. Amen.